first of all, I want to thank you guys all for your patience. It's been a long day and we have a lot of content and I think everybody's done a really great job of being attentive and the speakers too. And uh, loved seeing the weight chart, but I would have to disagree. I think open rates are still very important, although they are inflated because most smartphones auto load the image that's the tracking device, but, um, but they're still important. It's not not important. So today I'm going to talk about how you can get your users to go, must open now, um, through eight psychological triggers to hypnotize users and hack your open rates. But before that, just a little couple formalities. If you are on Twitter and you want to tweet about this talk, my handle is Susan F. Sue, and here are some hashtags you can use. Uh, quickly about me, I'm part of the 500 distribution team specializing in email marketing and content marketing. Before that, I was part of AppSumo and also I will teach you to be rich among others. So why email? It's pretty simple. Email equals money. Email is still the highest ROI channel that there is. There are no display algorithms to game, no news feed. It's highly trackable, even one-to-one -one emails, thanks to tools like Tout App, which is a 500 company, by the way. There are 4 billion email accounts worldwide, or 3.9. Um, and 25% of these are business accounts, which is really great if, for those of you out there that are in SaaS. That said, the challenges in email marketing are big. So it starts with deliverability, but this is a really short talk, so I'm going to assume that you guys know about things like mailtester.com and getting recipients to reply to you or add you to their contacts right away. After your email gets delivered, there are still more challenges. This is the reality. This is, my, this is a screenshot of my Gmail inbox. Um, the reality is that the average person gets over 500 marketing emails per month. That's the average person, not necessarily your recipient, who probably gets a whole lot more than that if they're like me and they do tech stuff or they're a part of another sought after demographic. So how do you get people to actually open the emails that you've painstakingly written and scheduled or automated? Average open rates across most industries hover around 23 to 25%, not very high. And that's even with the smartphone inflation. You can get a higher open rate if your list is very targeted, which is a bigger subscriber acquisition question, or if your brand is very recognizable and you can send from a really recognizable and well-liked from name, like 500 startups. But what if you're just a company that's a startup and you're just starting out, nobody knows who you are, you've got none of this stuff going for you? Well, the first problem in most startups' email marketing is that they're not doing it. That's the first problem. But once they do start, they face an even bigger problem, and one that's much more insidious and a lot harder to solve than just setting up a first welcome email. So as a founder or as the growth person in a startup, you're 100% focused on your startup and its needs. The problem is your email list and your customers don't care about your needs, they don't care about your startup, they don't even know your company's name, and they already forgot what you do. <laughs> it's your job to speak their language, to speak to their problems, and irresistibly mesmerize them with your customer clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. So next up, we're going to look at eight email techniques from a bunch of businesses that you probably won't ever read about in TechCrunch or Mattermark. We're going to look at real examples breaking down the social psychology used by a group of online marketers that are completely flying under the startup radar, but who are printing more money from words than most startups can get their Series A investors to commit for product. So let's take a look at the first example. Okay, so this may seem like a simple ebook freebie, but there's actually a lot going on in this example of reciprocity. This is the first content email that Brian sends after you subscribe to his list. But note that he doesn't tell you beforehand that you're going to get info on how to get 25K visitors per month for free. So it's not a lead magnet like what Massimo mentioned earlier. And this actually comes as a complete surprise to your inbox. Second, the offer is really compelling. 25,000 visitors a month is a number that's low enough to seem kind of realistic, but still high enough to get almost anybody's attention. Brian makes this offer very clear and over right there in the subject line, but he softens the free feeling by saying no charge instead of free in all caps. Again, notice that the subject line itself is very content forward, not free forward. But by the way, free is the key driver behind reciprocity in almost every single situation in life. Whether that's your email marketing or just your neighbor lending you a free hand. It's more than a hot button word. It's actually a hot button concept, and we are 
biologically wired to respond to it. So it's still one of the most effective and high converting hot button concepts to use in email marketing, but you don't have to just use the word free. For example, the world of SEO info can be distastefully full of overhype. That's why Brian's use of the words no charge still hits the free hot button, but it's just that much softer. It's just that much more believable and trustworthy. There's a lot of strong copy happening in this one single message, especially the way he summarizes the, the key benefits and the bullet points down there. I don't know if you guys can see, it's a little bit small, but you can check the slides after. Um, but the main point is, and this is the most important point about all of this, the ebook itself is really excellently, exceptionally good. After I skeptically downloaded it and skimmed through it, I felt immediately compelled to write Brian Dean, a guy that I've never met still to this day, a personal email thanking him just for making it. And ever since then, I have felt indebted to basically talk him up in public, like I'm doing right now on stage, for free. This is reciprocity in action. I've never met him. I'm not being sponsored. Um, by the way, Brian also resends this exact same email later on in his funnel, after I've forgotten all about it, which is another very effective internet marketing tactic that most startups are afraid to use, repetition. So what does making a commitment mean? Does it really work? Is it just a matter of putting a checkbox on your site and getting users to check to something so that they're committed? The subject line we see here is 2014, the year of unapologetic mastery. Commitment and consistency has to do with identity as much as it has to do with explicit individual actions. So we implicitly commit to an identity with the choices we've made in the past. In taking an action, we've implicitly made a commitment to the identity that that action is associated with. A great example from current events is Jeb Bush's diet and weight loss commitment. I don't know if you guys have heard, but Jeb Bush has lost a bunch of weight since last December. By doing publicly visible actions, he's made an implicit commitment to being a health conscious guy, a paleo guy, not just doing a diet, but being that type of person. By taking publicly visible actions, he's keeping himself on check, but the gaze of the public eye isn't the only thing keeping him in check. He and we all also have a natural inner drive to stay con consistent to our identity commitments. So consistency and commitment can be overt, as in explicitly asking subscribers to make a commitment, whether that's to improve their health or to support original artists or to work harder on their businesses, or it can be subtle like this example from Ramit. Ramit's subject line Im immediately evokes an identity commitment. You're committing to being the kind of person who isn't afraid to be excellent and who isn't going to shrink away because of what your lesser friends might say to you when, they're trying, when they find out you're using an info product. Oh, and by the way, Ramit is happy to be the person to sell you that info product in a few emails down the road. The point here is that Ramit effectively sets up an identity commitment and then counts on our need to stay consistent to our identity commitments in order to help drive conversions when it's time for the sell. Social proof, most of us know about social proof, or we think we do, but it's actually a lot more than showing your Facebook likes on your homepage. We humans evolved as social creatures, surviving best in groups. To this day, no matter how independent we pride ourselves on being, we still look to other people around us for cues on how to act and even what to think. The asterisk here in our very populated world is which people. The best use of social proof in email marketing leverages dynamics like in-group, out-group, the cool kids slash famous people are doing it, and validation by critical mass. So let's take a look at these subject lines. One way to use social proof is creating an in-group versus an out-group, or an us versus them. The subject line, people get mad when you don't fit in their box, draws a strong line between us, the group that includes the sender and the recipient, and them out there. Using quotation marks around the word box and around the word side effects in the preview text further derides the out-group's beliefs and reinforces social belonging in the in-group. The cool kids are doing it is an approach that we see in this tout email name dropping the warriors. Uh, the, the subject line says, how the Golden State Warriors use tout to measure engagement and other tout stories. And then in the subject line below that, win, win, win. Hi, Susan, a few, a few years ago, a reporter from Fortune Magazine followed me around for several months and dot, dot, dot. So the, uh, the name dropping here is really effective because in both instances, uh, it tells you that this brand is being approved and condoned by a VIP so much so that they want to use tout um, for their product or follow Ramit around for several months. 
Here the key is that the VIP has relevant VIP sway with the recipient audience. Finally, let's take a look at the very bottom there, a quick example from First Class Flyer. It's a subscription info business on how to maximize travel upgrades and reward systems. Um, it's sold as a membership sub subscription. So Matthew's subject line, to all members, is extra effective here because it feels exclusive and insidery, especially when the members seem to already know about this special upgrade glitch that got them into business class on Singapore Airlines, which we understand from the, his use of the all caps word, that, that Singapore Airlines glitch. Although Matthew doesn't specifically say that all 400 beneficiaries of this upgrade glitch were FCF members, he anchors members to those 400 people with the word, use of the word that in his subject line, which makes it all feel even more insidery. We think or assume that he's talking about a whole bunch of his own customers who just got great results, presumably from being part of his in-group. So this is a great example of how social proof works best in today's world where our marketing filters are very sensitive not explicitly as in the Marlboro man said, buy this now, but by proxy. Um, liking, we're more likely to do things for people we like. We're more likely to believe them and be persuaded by them. Classic bestsellers like How to Win Friends and Influence People all seek to answer the question, how can we get more people to like us more so that we can get them to do what we want? The use of the like factor is obvious in ads featuring attractive people or in direct direct sales, but how does it translate to email marketing, which is not so visual, especially subject lines? In addition to simply adopting a friend-oriented tone, the most effective text-only usages of the like factor leverage four things, praise, association, familiarity, and similarity. Noah's subject line in this email is one of my favorites of all time. It's got a call to action right in the subject line, and even though it uses strong language, it's earnest, straightforward, and friendly. The subject line says, if you can't read it, Go fucking bold in 2015 and work with me. Uh, below that, David D'Angelo is a marketing pseudonym for Eben Pagan, one of the top internet marketers, info marketers of all time. His business, Double Your Dating, is an online info business teaching men dating skills and confidence that's a $20 million a year annual business, which is not too bad for an information-only product using email as its primary conversion channel. Um, in this subject line, Eben leverages association, familiarity, and similarity. How regular looking guys attract hot women. A regular looking guy is presumably what the subscriber feels himself to be, and also the kind of guy that the sender is suggesting he himself is. So we're like you and I. Again, even if they can't see you, you can still get them to like you via praise, association, familiarity, and similarity. Authority comes across in a lot of different ways. We have recognized celebrities like the president or a news anchor, personal authority figures like parents, teachers, societal authority figures like police or clergy, and wealth or high status authority. Uh, we rely on three signals for authority, titles, clothes, and trappings. In 1968, there was a study where researchers discovered that 50% of drivers stuck behind a luxury car that didn't go at a green light, just waited there politely, did nothing. Um, in this, when the same situation was replicated behind an economy car, every single driver honked and two even rammed the rear bumper of the car in front of them. Um, right here in these examples, Neil's subject line is get your MBA in internet marketing with these 12 guides and two courses. His use of MBA has immediate authority sway with his audience who are aspiring marketers and business types. Cal Newport is a computer science professor at Georgetown University who also runs an info marketing list called Study Hacks. His reference to Warren Buffett and Barack Obama are especially resonant to his audience of well-educated, success-oriented achievers. Um, here are a few examples of authority words that might be relevant to your category. Doctor, researcher, scientist, CEO, CTO, CMO, maybe even investor. Scarcity is the most well-known and probably the most widely used psychological trigger. We've all received those emails around the holidays, one day left to shop before Christmas. The deadline technique is so widely used and misused that I personally believe we're becoming numb to it. Not because it doesn't work, but because we no longer believe the deadlines to be 100% true. The most effective usage of the deadline technique follows through on the promise to expire the offer or opportunity by the deadline specified, like these examples from AppSumo. Um, it's not just a gimmick here. If you click through these AppSumo offers, um, the, the, they'll actually be expired if it's after the 24-hour window. 
Um, just quickly, the limited number technique you can also use with the deadline technique in the program on, neg on negotiation email from Harvard, uh, the, the Harvard Negotiation Institute. You've got 11 days left, which is a really long deadline window, but then if you see in the preview text, it says last remaining spots. So they couple the limited number technique to make their deadline technique even stronger. Um, quickly, I want to talk about fear and aspirations. So they're not technically part of Cialdini's classical influence factors, but they are powerful behavior triggers used almost constantly by internet marketers turning emails into conversions. Most marketing people are likely to know that you should be painting a picture of what your customer could become with the help of your product. This is aspiration, plain and simple. But what a lot of startup email marketers fail to do, even when you do use aspiration, is understand that an aspiration makes the most sense and is the most poignant in the context of its opposite. Fear. Fear and aspiration go hand in hand. Um, Evan articulates fear overtly, even using the word fear in the subject lines themselves. But each example also contains a light at the end of the tunnel, an aspiration that you can get to if only you overcome that fear. Um, just quickly, if you can't read these, the key to making her laugh with you, not at you. At you is the fear, with you is the aspiration. Competition from other men and how to handle it. Other competition from other men is the fear. How to handle it is the aspiration. The most dangerous mistake you can make with a woman. This one's just fear. <laughs> so how can startups use the one-two punch of fear and aspiration? Well, if you're selling SaaS, a customer fear that you could explicitly spell out might be wasting time, wasting money, leaving money on the table, or being embarrassed, looking bad in front of your boss. An aspiration that pairs well with that could be doing more visible, impactful work with less busy work, making more sales, or becoming a superstar on your team. But note that your opens and click-throughs are going to be a lot higher if you lead with fear. So seven biggest time wasters for social media marketers. Is this you? Will work better guaranteed than seven ways to save more time and be a superstar social media marketer. Um, before we wrap up, I just want to quickly go over my email checklist. It doesn't matter if it's a drip email or a newsletter. Uh, one, make sure you're using psychological triggers in your subject line. Two, don't waste your preview text because it's another subject line that you get to use. Um, three, mobile first is so key. Over 65% of emails are opened on mobile devices first, so make sure your emails and calls to action are mobile, totally mobile optimized. Um, next, don't ever send an email without a CTA. If you don't have a CTA in your email, why are you even bothering that person? Your entire email itself is a little funnel. So don't let the lead potential leak out with multiple CTA destinations or multiple things you're trying to get people to do. One email, one CTA. However, in my experience, writing and sending conversion-oriented emails, which I personally think should be all emails, um, multiple ex appearances of the same call to action always beats out just one single appearance of a link or a button. Finally, there are a lot of components you can test and play with. I'm not going to read all of these because you guys can get it from the slides. But basically, don't believe other people's rules Test yourself. Uh, I just put up some boring emails from real companies that I've received recently. Um, so just quickly in summary, what happens a lot of times with, with early companies in email marketing is that we look at the promotional material that we get in our own inboxes. We're not sure what, we do, what to do, so we just copy it. I've seen a lot of early companies echo the tone, style, and call to action and other elements of mainstream brand email marketers that may or may not even be in their own same category. However, here's the thing you got to keep in mind. Startups are missing the complementary spend that bigger brands leverage to add people to their list, to run big budget display, or even print ca campaigns to support their email marketing. Um, all of this stuff adds an inbox buffer for them and lets them be slightly more blasty, slightly less direct response. When you're a startup, you don't have a brand yet. You don't have this buffer. No one knows who you are and no one cares yet. So instead of running your email marketing like a big brand would with all their cross-channel marketing support, run your email marketing a little more like the lean info marketing businesses we've looked at here, the marketers with no name and no tech crunch effect. Understand and optimize around the psychological triggers that influence all of us, and you can spin your words into pure gold. Um, so that's it. I actually finished on time. And if you guys want to reach out to me, here's how, and office hours right now. Thank you.